Now, when we talk about getting cinematic footage out of the Sony ZV-E10, we're really talking about three different things. We're talking about getting the settings right in the camera. We're talking about getting the lighting right in the environment. Now that could be natural lighting or artificial lighting. And we're talking about the lens. And today what I'm having a look at is the cheapest cinema lens that I have found that you can buy that goes on the Sony ZV-E10. This lens was sent out to me for the purpose of making this video, but all opinions are my own and this is not a sponsored video. I will put a link in the description down below if you want to check out further pricing and availability of the lens. And the first question we need to ask is what is the difference between a cinema lens and a standard photography lens? And there's a couple of different things. The first thing is in most cases, a cinema lens is a fixed focal length. In this case, this is a 12 millimeter lens and it can't zoom in and out. If you want the image that is coming onto your screen to be bigger or smaller, you have to move in and out. Now, obviously there are fixed photography lenses, but there's also plenty of zoom lenses. In general, cinema lenses are rarely zoom lenses. They're almost always fixed focal length lenses. Now the next difference that you're gonna see, and when it comes to image quality, is the fact that in general, cinema lenses are designed to give a more natural looking image, a slightly sort of lower contrast image, and generally have a better what they call highlight roll off. And essentially what this does is it just makes the image look a little bit more filmic and a little bit less sort of video phone looking. And certainly if you shoot with the ZV-E10 with the kit lens and the default settings, you often get a very high contrast image that looks fairly over sharpened and can tend to look a bit like something you're getting out of a phone. But what I've done is I've tweaked the settings in the camera, I've thrown the cinema lens on, and I think this uh, image looks much more pleasing and it looks much more like you would expect to see in a, say, a Netflix documentary or a Hollywood video production. Now, beyond just the difference in the image quality you're going to get from a cinema lens versus a standard photography lens, like the kit lens for the ZV-E10, there is quite a difference beyond that. And the first thing is the build quality. The kit lens is a tiny little lightweight plastic lens. A cinema lens like this and every cinema lens that I've ever seen is a fully metal lens. And this uh, cinema lens probably weighs more than it does. It weighs more than the body of the ZV-E10, even with my small rig cage on there. So a cinema lens is generally a very heavy lens, a full metal body uh, with sort of a fair bit of glass in it. The other thing about a cinema lens is they are almost always, there's a few exceptions now, but they're almost always fully manual focus and manual aperture lenses. And interestingly, beyond being manual focus and manual aperture, they also have this gearing on the side of them. Now, you don't actually have to use this gearing in the way that it's designed. And uh, for all the samples that you're seeing in, the, in this video, I just used it handheld and I didn't engage anything with the gearing. But in Hollywood and sort of Hollywood productions or commercial video productions where they are using a cinema lens, this actually mounts on the camera and they have an entire rig and they will actually have a geared focus puller, which will connect to the focus ring and be able to turn it with sort of a knob on the side. There will also tend to be often a sort of a remote controlled focus pull. So you can have one person operating the camera moving in and out. And then you've got the other person with a sort of Bluetooth or Wi-Fi controlled knob and they turn that knob and then that gearing links in with the focus ring and turns the focus ring. Now for me, all the video samples that you're gonna see in this video, I just put on the camera like I would a normal lens. And beyond that, I just pulled all the focus manually myself, which with the ZV-E10 is actually quite easy because the ZV-E10 has what's called focus peaking. And that is just a little setting, very easy to turn on in the menu system. And what it does is when something is in focus in your scene, it just highlights the outside of them with a sort of, I think it's red highlight by default or white or yellow maybe. So you got a couple different choices depending on what is most pleasing to your eye or is most easy for you to see. So I just used that focus peaking to know what was in focus when I was doing sort of a manual focus pull by turning the aperture or by turning the focus ring the other thing is the focus ring is crazy smooth I mean you probably if you haven't held a cinema lens you probably never felt anything like this I certainly hadn't until I had used a cinema lens the other thing you're gonna notice is 
on the side of the focus, it actually has a line and it shows you what distance your critical focus is. So it shows you at what point you are focusing on the lens just by looking at where this little line lines up with these focus measurements. And what I've found is this is extremely accurate. And beyond using the peaking in the camera, if you, even if you're not very good at estimating distances, once you use this, you'll actually get pretty good at it and you can kind of speculate about how far something is away. You set it to that or look at that and set it to that and you're probably going to be pretty well in focus. The other thing you need to know, and I think a lot of people are so afraid of manual focus, don't be afraid of manual focus, particularly for video, because what you need to know is we are shooting a 4K image, which is, I think, the equivalent of eight megapixels. Now, if you imagine if you miss focus by a little bit on 24 megapixels and zoom in, you're probably gonna notice it. If you miss it on eight megapixels or 4K video, you don't actually notice it at all. And what you'll find is even in Hollywood and commercial video productions, they know this and sometimes they miss focus by a little bit but it doesn't really matter because it's just not noticeable to the viewer. So I think you have to know that manual focus is a lot easier for video than it is for photo because nailing critical focus in video is easier. Now, given it's a manual aperture lens, the camera can't control the aperture at all. So what I have done for all these videos is I've pretty much in most cases just set it to a T2.9, which is the lowest aperture that you can get on this. And I've shot the video in aperture priority in the camera. And I found this quite easy to do. The only time you dial that down is if you want a sort of a deeper depth of field to get a bit more in focus, you might dial it down to sort of F4, 5.6, F8. But if you wanna get a little bit of subject separation between the people in the foreground and what's in the background, then you just dial it to T2.9 and that gives you a little bit more background separation. Now I did mention earlier that this lens is rated in T-stops and that is different than F-stops. This is also one of the major differences between a cinema lens like this and a photography lens. A photography lens rates the um, how big the aperture is in the back of the lens that allows light to hit the sensor in F-stops, right? That lets you know just how big that opening is. So F1.4 or F8 is the same size opening on any lens out there. Now with this lens, in a cinema lens, cinema lenses are designed so that you can swap between one cinema lens and another cinema lens and still have the same exposure. And f-stop shows you how big the opening is, but that doesn't necessarily tell you how much light is hitting the sensor. That is because different lenses have different amounts of glass and different types of optical elements, and actually those elements can slow or reduce the amount of light coming in and hitting the sensor, even if the f-stop or the aperture in the back of the lens is open to the same amount. And when you're shooting a sort of a documentary or a video, you might be shooting something, you know all the settings in your camera, you know you've got it at sort of T2.9. You wanna be able to take another lens and put it on there regardless of how big that opening is and know that your exposure is going to be exactly the same for any given shot. So because of that, cinema lenses are not sort of identified by how big the opening is, but by how much light is coming through and hitting the sensor. So if you shoot at T2.9 on this cinema lens and you shoot at T2.9 on another cinema lens, they're both going to have the same amount of light hitting the sensor. On a photography lens, if you shoot at say, f2.9 on one lens and then swap to another, you might have a change in exposure because the optical elements aren't taken into account in how much light is hitting the lens. They're only talking about how big that opening is in the back of the lens. I just thought I'd explain that for most people that are shooting on the ZV-E10, that's just more information than it is really useful to you. It probably won't matter too much, but that's why this lens is rated as a maximum opening of T2.9 and not F2.9. The other thing I did when I shot all this footage is I shot it in what's called S-Log2. This is a more cinematic log footage that when brought into the camera has to be modified to make it look good for the final production. And the first time you pull log footage into a camera or into your computer out of the ZV-E10, you're gonna be like, wow, this doesn't look very good. And that's because this is footage that is designed to be modified before it is published. So this is what I did. I shot in S-Log2 and 
It may sound a bit daunting, but there's something called lookup tables or LUTs. And these are things that you can apply to your S-log footage to make it look like finished footage. And just to keep it simple here, I didn't do any advanced color grading with this. I just drug one of these LUTs on there and dropped it on there and changed it to the footage that you're seeing now. Now, in my case, I use something that's called the Phantom LUTs. I will link those to, uh, in the description down below. But most video editors have some sort of S-Log2 to what's called Rec 709 conversion, which just converts it into colors that look nice for sort of production or publishing. But you also find that Sony publishes one of these LUTs which you can download from their website and it will convert that S-Log2 that comes out of the camera to something more colorful and something that you can publish uh, straight to the whatever platform you're using just after converting it. So don't be afraid to shoot an S-Log2. It does get you a better quality video at the end and it isn't that hard to just drop a lot on it and to get a reasonably pleasing look and cinematic look just by doing that sort of little modification. Now, are there any disadvantages to shooting with this specific specific cinema lens. Well, the first thing I will say is uh, this lens and a lot of cinema lenses, in fact, I would say most cinema lenses have a slight bit of barrel distortion and the camera doesn't correct for that. And you will see that. I will throw a couple of shots up on screen now. This is a slight amount of barrel distortion. If you look in most uh, movies, if you're watching Netflix, have a look for barrel distortion. You'll find in some scenes there's massive amounts of barrel distortion. But in video, this doesn't seem to matter nearly like it does in photography. So I wouldn't be afraid of it, but I thought it was worth mentioning in case you buy the lens and you do notice that. The other thing that obviously people are going to be afraid of is that it's a manual focus, manual aperture lens. This really isn't that hard to deal with. Manual focus, manual aperture isn't that hard, particularly with a lens like this at 12 millimeters. It's got a sort of a reasonably deep depth of field, and that's the area that is in focus sort of at any given point. It's also T2.9, so it's not a super shallow depth of field. And then the camera itself has focus peaking, which makes it very easy to nail focus. So I would not throw out getting a manual focus lens just because you're afraid of manual focus. And all the shots that you've seen in this video, I just shot with manual focus. I just did handheld manual focus. Now, putting a cinema lens on your ZV-E10 is obviously a way to get more cinematic video footage. But one of the most cinematic things you can do is a time lapse. And the ZV-E10 creates incredible time lapses. And I've just thrown a video on screen now, and if you don't know how to shoot compelling time lapses on your ZV-E10, have a watch of this video, because I think you will be absolutely blown away.